Waves are produced by vibrations or oscillations, which means back and forth movements. All waves transfer energy. And there are two types of waves, longitudinal waves and transverse waves. A sound wave is an example of a longitudinal wave. In a longitudinal wave, there are regions of compression and rarefaction. So compression are these regions here, whereby the particles are close together, and rarefaction are the regions where the particles are further apart. In a longitudinal wave, the oscillations are parallel to the direction of energy transfer. So let's have a look at what that means. So if I were to produce longitudinal waves in this slinky, the oscillations would have to be parallel to the energy transfer. So if I oscillate, which means move back and forth, the slinky, in a sideways direction, the energy transfer would be parallel to this. For a longitudinal wave, you can see that I oscillate the slinky from right to left, and the energy is also transferred from right to left. So my oscillations are parallel to the direction of energy transfer. And you can also see clearly the areas of compression and rarefaction as that wave of energy moves along the slinky. Water and light are examples of transverse waves. In a transverse wave, the oscillations are perpendicular, which means at 90 degrees, to the direction of energy transfer. So if I were to produce a transverse wave on this slinky, we'd need to make sure our oscillations are perpendicular to the energy transfer. So this time, you'll notice, I will oscillate the slinky up and down, but the energy transfer will still be from right to left. So in this example, notice how the oscillations are at 90 degrees to the energy transfer. So if we see a transverse wave in action, you will see as I oscillate the slinky up and down, the energy is transferred from right to left. So my oscillations are perpendicular to the energy transfer. On a wave diagram, you can see basic features such as the peak and the trough of the wave. For longitudinal waves, you can use an oscilloscope to view the waveform and its properties. So for example, if you had a sound wave, you could use an oscilloscope and that will allow you to view that sound wave as if it were transverse. So you can see the basic properties of the wave. The first property we'll look at is wavelength. Wavelength is the length of one complete wave and it's measured in metres. So here we're measuring wavelength between two peaks. As long as you measure wavelength between the same points each time, there are a number of different ways that you can measure it. For example, you could measure the wavelength between two troughs like this and equally that will be the wavelength and it will be the same length as you me measured above. Or you can measure the wavelength perhaps between the start of the wave here and where it goes up, down and back again and starts again here. So there's several different places you could measure wavelength and they would all give the same reading. Second property we'll look at is amplitude. Amplitude is dis the distance between the midpoint and the peak or the midpoint and the trough. So the mistake people make is when they think the amplitude is the height of the whole wave. Okay, It's not that. You must be measuring amplitude between this midline here and either the peak or measuring it between the midline and the trough. They'll both give the same value but you can either measure it between the midline and the peak or the midline and the trough. That is the amplitude. Frequency is the number of complete waves that go past a certain point per second. 
So one complete wave, if we start from the midpoint here, would go up, down and then back again to that same midpoint position. So on this wave diagram here we've got one, two, three complete waves. Frequency is measured in hertz. So you can see here that wave B has a higher frequency than wave A because if we were to measure the number of waves that were going past this point every second wave B would have many more waves passing that point compared to wave A so it would have a higher frequency measured in Hertz. Hi guys if you enjoyed that last video then please click on the screen to subscribe you can also find all my videos in one place at GCSERevisionMonkey.com if you're a teacher check out the key stage 3 package at sciencesurgery.com it contains all of the Revision Monkey videos as well as loads more Key Stage 3 resources.